I'm going to go ahead and get the Cascade Pro 2.0 license key installed on my 9265 rate adapter. So I double click the license key and copy it to the clipboard. Now I'm going to start the MegaRaid Storage Manager. A couple things to notice is that I have to use 1108.03.03 or later for compatibility. And I have to have a certain firmware installed on the RAID adapter. So let's next have a look at that firmware level. And there's our firmware package. Okay, notice it says 30 days, so it's May 1st. And let's try to do this. It tells us to first go to the now let's go ahead and size the window side by side. We're going to go to the dashboard. <clears throat> then we're going to click on Manage Mega Rate Advanced Software Option. We're going to need a little more uh, elbow room here. Scroll down. Acts a little weird when it's sized like this. Manage Mega Rate Advanced Software Option. Excellent. Click the Activate button, enter the license key, paste it from the clipboard, hit Next, and it tells me it's enabling everything. FastPath, Cascade Pro 2.0, Safe Store, Password Protection, nice. Please restart the system, make sure to stop all IOs. Um, Okay. So if I skip restarting the system and I try to just turn on Cascade, well, for one, I don't have a solid state drive attached that, uh, to do that. I've got a solid state drive, but it's got um, it's in a RAID zero, so it's not really available. If I click here, go back to the software options, uh, we can actually see what I just did. So I guess I'm going to go ahead and follow along with what it told me to do, and that is to reboot. Um, All right, because there's a remote desktop connection, uh, there's no simple restart. Let me just use an out-of-band way um, to log in and take care of that. Sorry for the crummy graphics. It has to do with my keyboard video mouse switch here. OK, so I'm restarting. I'm going to go ahead and keep it recording while it reboots. I'm curious if the LSI RAID adapter shows anything special or different at boot time to indicate that Cascade 2.0 is active. Keep watching. Coming up, we'll see Mega RAID. I'm not going to bother hitting Control H to go into the web bias. I'm just going to boot right off into uh, Windows 7 64 bit again. Okay, there's the Mega Raid bias. There's the firmware package. So it doesn't seem there's any visual indicator other than said battery fully charged. I see nothing about cache gate or anything in there. All right. I don't boot from my Raid adapter. That's why you see adapter bias disabled message. Okay, so once we're back in Windows, I'm going to start the MegaRaid user interface again. 
And uh, I guess then I should see evidence that a uh, cache key is available to me. Okay, we're back in with Remote Desktop. Okay, let's launch MegaRaid Storage Manager. So it doesn't look too good, actually. Um, I still can't click here. Oh, OK, it does look good. On the bottom left, it says enabled. So that's good. The reason these are now blue is because there's no SSD available. All right, so all those options show enabled. Um, I'm all set. Uh, tomorrow, I'll be sticking an SSD in there. And uh, go ahead and do some before and after testing and see how I do for speed. Logically, you'll see I have a RAID 5 consisting of five physical drives, 1.5 terabytes each. And uh, I have a single old solid state drive configured as a RAID 0, uh, a single solid state drive, just acting as storage, you know, pooled storage in VMware. But um, that's about it. I'm going to go ahead and reboot back to uh, ESXi and um, when I get the solid state drive, I'll shut down. I'll install the caching drive, and then I'll configure it with cache gate, continuing from here. Hopefully you found this video helpful. That ends my demonstration of how simple it is to license CacheGate Pro 2.0 for a 30-day trial and FastPath along with it, as well as, apparently, this feature called Recovery and Safe Store. Thank you for watching.